Okay, word up, word up. Try to tell them. Look here. I uh, want to come back, matter of fact, to, to finish what I started today during the rehearsal. Well, actually, before rehearsal, when I was trying to explain to y'all the different functions, in, in other words, when it comes to the Word of God, the Word of God don't change. The Lord, the Word, the word of God doesn't change. What he said today, he means it today and tomorrow. And what I was getting, but I don't never like to leave anyone hanging. And so this is why I was, I hated that I went into it so in depth before we got to rehearsal. And I didn't have time to finish it up after the rehearsal, but we want to make certain that everybody have a mind and, have, and be on the same sheet of music. Now what I was speaking of about our group, I mean that. We would not to be a performing group running up and down the road every Sunday. That's not going to happen. And I mean that. That was not the intent. The original intent. This is how I come. I was telling you, Lewis, that the original intent of the deaconship was in the beginning to see about the widows of the church. The daily administration. This is how I come. This office became open and the preachers, which were Paul and not Paul, but Peter, James, and John, the apostles of Christ. They were the preacher, and they said that they could not take themselves away from the gospel in order to serve tables. So they told the people to look them out, seven men of good report, honest, full of the Holy Ghost, that they may appoint to be over this business. Now you read your Bible. But when I said the original intent, and that the other things that were added on after the fact, mostly by man but a lot of it i wanted to let you know that don't take your deaconship lightly because let me tell you something about some great deacons in the early church number one a lot of people don't even know stephen was a deacon oh yeah the martyr stephen was the first martyr of the church he was the first christian that was martyred because he was so powerful. He told those Pharisees off to their face. He didn't get behind their back and tell them. He said, you are always a bunch of stiff-necked people that didn't want to do what was right. Stephen was a real deacon. Or oh, I'd be glad to be called a deacon if I could be like Stephen. Stephen stood up when it was time to stand up. That's why I looked at you today, Lewis, when I told you about it. That's the reason why some of you going through persecution right now and been taken off of things because you want to do what was right. That's why I looked at you. I thought you would get it. I thought you would get it. But Stephen was a deacon. Oh yeah. Stephen was a deacon. Their job originally was to see about the widow. But Stephen took it a lot further because he was guided by the Holy Ghost. And he spoke like he was one guided with the Holy Ghost. Stephen was so powerful, they just, they just trampled on him. And they just stopped up the ears and ran him down and just stoned, threw him outside the walls of Jerusalem. And they stoned Stephen to death. He was a deacon. But he told the truth with power. Yes, he was a deacon. He was a deacon. Matter of fact, when they stoned Stephen, Paul was the main one. He was Paul at that time. His name was Saul. He held the coat for the people that stoned Stephen. Paul was standing right there. But this was before Paul was converted. His name was Saul at that time. Now, let me, I ain't through. I ain't through. Let me tell you about another deacon. See, in other words, we had deacon like this today, Brother Lewis, in the church. We will have church. Where everything will be going according to the plan. Let me tell you another deacon. Read in the book of Acts about Philip. Philip was a deacon. He preached. He teach. He baptized. This was a deacon. All right, I'm going to tell you what it looked. Find the one with the Ethiopian eunuch. That was the treasurer. He was head of the treasurer for the Queen Candace out of Ethiopia. That's where he was. He was over the whole thing. Philip is the one that went to the chariot. He was sitting there reading about in the book of Isaiah about Jesus. But he didn't understand what it was reading. Philip was the one that told him what it was all about and about baptism. And he said, you can do it right now. He said, have some water. Let us do it now. What prevent me from being baptized now? 
Philip said nothing. Philip got down out of the chariot and baptized the eunuch right there on the spot. This was a deacon. See, they, they don't, the preachers don't want you to know this. But this was a deacon that did what was right. Oh yeah, wouldn't be, I wouldn't belittle the deaconship at all, brother. I wouldn't, I wouldn't belittle the deaconship at all, but we got very few deacons now. That's what I'm telling you, letting you know. But see, you already got first-hand notice of that because when you tried to do right, look what they did to you. They persecuted you. And that's what we're going to do all Christians. That be, if you are a Christian and if you are uh, following Jesus Christ, you're going to suffer persecution. There's no way around it. If you don't suffer with Christ, you're not going to reign with him. But that's why a lot of people don't do nothing, dog. That's why I love a lot of people, they, they don't do anything because they don't want to suffer for that. They think everything's supposed to be easy. But in this life, it's rarely easy, especially if you're going to follow Christ. But yes, Philip was a deacon. Stephen was a deacon. But they were powerful. They preached and teach and baptized. Right now, a preacher will tell you right now, Lewis, that you ain't supposed to preach. And you ain't supposed to do this in the church because you just a deacon. No, they don't want you to know what you're supposed to do. But Philip preached the gospel to this Ethiopian eunuch and baptized him right there on the spot. And the spirit caught Philip away. When Philip know anything, he was way off in somewhere else. He was transported in the spirit by Holy Spirit. That's what I was trying to tell you today. I didn't finish telling you. Now there it is. Read the book of Acts. Those stories about that. They were deacons. Now you use your common sense. And from your knowledge of what you see in the church today, tell me how many deacons you know. That's all I'm asking. Now how come I said, no, I'm not a little in that office. Because that's not an office to be little. It's a great honorable office. Because all of us are serving. But what I wanted you to know, we don't have to stay at the original intent. But when you want to go higher in God, that's all right. But make it higher in God. Don't, don't mess around there and mess up and, and belittle yourself. Oh, no. Deacons were very powerful because they were following the Holy Ghost. But most preachers will tell you right now, and I don't care which one of them know it. I tell them I said it. They don't want you to know that. Talking about what you can't do unless you got a license. They didn't have no license. I didn't see now license Stephen had. I didn't have now license that Peter, Philip had. You, why would you need a license to do something God told you to do? Think about it. Think about it. That's what I wanted y'all to know, and I didn't have a chance to finish telling y'all that today. But you got to mind yourself. Get the whole scoop. Because a lot of times people are not belittling you. They're just trying to get you to see the original intent. Because it was God's original intent that you and I live forever. But look, we die every day. But that wasn't in God's original plan. The original plan was for us to live forever. And guess what? Jesus came and fulfilled it. Oh yeah, we still go to sleep. Because that's just the way it is. Because God spoke. God said, from dust thou art, from dust you shall return. That cannot be changed. But Jesus came and fixed it. So God is still going to have his way. We are going to live forever. Jesus done fixed that. All we got to do now is what? Believe in him. Believe in Jesus. Nothing else. None of your good work. None of my good work. I ain't, none of us got no good work to do. But the only thing we must do is believe. Don't let anybody tell you anything different that you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this. You ain't got to do nothing because you can't do nothing. Jesus done told us that we can't do nothing. In other words, without me, you can't do nothing. That's what Jesus said. So you just got to believe. Oh yeah, brother. Deaconship got a very, very important part in the church. To be humble and a servant and powerful in God. Using the, the power of the Holy Ghost to lead you and guide you into all truth. As well as all of us. We must be led by the Holy Ghost. Point blank. Let nobody tell you what you cannot do. You can do all things through Christ. But you can't do nothing yourself. Amen. So with that being said, we're going to put this on up. I kind of figured that I wouldn't get back with y'all no more today. I'm going to put this up on YouTube as a private video. Y'all will be the only one to see it. But I'm just remember that now. That was a powerful office. And it was a powerful. Philip and Stephen were two of the most powerful deacons ever was. Those are your examples. A lot of this you see out here. 
Don't take them as your example. Because they far from the they far from the fit of the mold, doctor. Y'all be good. Till the next time. Peace and out.